While discharging this delicate office, I saw a young young. We loved each other at once, but she was betrothed to a guardian Coco, a cheap tailor, and I saw my suit was hopeless. Overwhelmed with despair, I quitted the town. Judge of my delight when I heard a month ago that.
Coho had been condemned to death for flirting. I hurried back at once in the hope of finding Yum Yum at liberty to listen to my protestations. It is true that Coco was condemned to death for flirting, but was reprieved at the last moment and raised the exalted rank of Lord High Executioner under the following remarkable circumstances. <laughs> And when my young man my best is dead He did breathe in words that seem that go to flirt and play down with fun That's my new reality Should both wet be be dead Chief Justice, Commander-in-Chief, 
Lord High Admiral, Master of the Buckhound, Groom of the Backstairs, Archbishop of Disapproval, and Lord Mayor, both acting and elect. And at his salary, the Poobah paid for his services. Ah, his salary is million. But I don't. It will both be, but I don't. And it does you credit. But I don't stop at that. I go and dine with middle class people, on reasonable terms. I dance the cheap suburban parties, for a moderate fee. I accept refreshments at any time, however lowly. I also retail state secrets for a very low figure. For instance, any further information on Yum Yum would come under the head of state secrets. Another insult, and I think a light one. <laughs>
on wings with fit to make it wings for dishes of all kinds. And teachers who are quite in vain and talk to their behind. And only country singers and some entertainers try by dressing up like cowboys and about singing like the crowd. And who are close up dozens need a psychic therapist? I don't think they'd be missed. I'm sure they'd not be missed. He's talking on the list. He's talking on the list. There's the housewives who on cable with the silly tales of woe and the gods of parliament. I've got her on the list of pretty and comedians and opera singers too. They'll none of them be missed. They'll none of them be missed. Or traffic one terrorist TDs who change their mind. Or BMW chappies and cockerians of all kinds. And silly little editors whose papers are the pits who fill their ranks with lots of awful British royal twins. And girls who tell the stories of the clergy they have kissed You must have got the gist, they're none of them be kissed They're on the list, you may put them on the list And they're not of them be kissed, they're approaching marriage was last week. I should like to do it uh, handsomely, and I wish to consult you as to the amount I ought to spend upon them. Certainly. In which of my capacities as finance minister, Lord Chamberlain, Attorney General, Chancellor of the Exchequer, Privy Purse, or EC Commissioner? I uh, suppose we say as EC Commissioner. Yeah. Speaking as your EC Commissioner, I should say that as you also have to pay for it, don't stint yourself. Do it well. Exactly, as you should pay for it. Uh, that is great. Not much. As EC Commissioner. Of course, you will understand that as Chancellor of the Exchequer, I am bound to see the two economy is observed. Oh, but what you said just now, don't stint yourself. Do it well. As EC Commissioner. Uh, and now you say that your economy must be observed. As Chancellor of the Exchequer. I see. <coughs> Come over here where the Chancellor can't hear us. <laughs> now, as my solicitor, how do you advise me to deal with this difficulty? Oh, as your solicitor, I should have no hesitation in saying check. Thank you, my good. If it not, as a justice minister, I am bound to see that the law isn't violated. I see. Come over here with justice, Mr. Cartierus. Now, as Minister for Finance and Chairman of the County Council. <coughs> of course, as Chairman of the County Council, I could propose a special vote that would cover all expenses. If it were not, then as Leader of the Opposition, it would be my duty to not to resist it tooth and nail. Or, as Minister for Social Welfare, I could so cut the accounts but as Lord High Auditor, I should never discover the fraud. But then, as Archbishop of Tishbu, and as Chief Rabbi, <laughs> it would be my duty to denounce my dishonesty and place myself into my own custody as First Commissioner of Police. That's extremely awkward. I don't say all these distinguished people couldn't be squared, but it is right to tell you that they wouldn't be sufficiently degraded in their own estimation unless they were insulted with a very considerable bribe. <laughs> the matter should have my careful consideration. Ah, oh, but wait. My bright and assisted approach and animated compliment on your part, such as an abject grovel in a characteristic Japanese attitude, will be esteemed a favour. <laughs> no money, no grovel. <laughs> Thank you. 
I consider there is all indiscretion. Why? <laughs> one two minutes to paint a wind instrument outside of a tea house. It's hardly a person happens to walk along as I ask the fusioner. But shall I get her? Yes, she will not betray me. But what if it should prove that, after all, I am no musician? There, I'm a very good director, I heard you say. <laughs> what if it should prove that I am none other than the son of his majesty, the Mikado? The son of the Mikado? But why is your highness disguised? And what's your highness done? And will your highness promise never to do it again? Some years ago, I had the misfortune to captivate Katisha, an elderly lady of my father's court. She misconstrued my customary affability into expressions of affection and claimed me in marriage under my father's law. My father, being the Lucius Julius Brutus of his race, ordered me to marry her within a week or perish ignominiously on the scaffold. That night, I fled my father's court, and assuming the disguise of a second trombone, I joined the band in which I found you when I had the happiness of seeing you. If you please, I think your highness had better not come to me. The laws against flirting are excessively severe. But we are quite alone, and nobody can see us. Still, that doesn't make it right. Flirting is capital. It is capital. And we must obey the law. Deuce, take the law. Oh, I wish it would, but it won't. If it were not for that, how happy we might be. Happy indeed. If it were not for the law, we should now be sitting side by side, like that. We should be gazing into each other's eyes, like that. Speaking stars of unutterable love. Oh, like that. With our arms around each other's waists, like that. If it wasn't for the law. If it wasn't for the law. And for this, of course, we couldn't do anything of the kind. Not for worlds. Being engaged to Coco, you know. Being engaged to Coco. Oh, matrimony. Now then, sir, what is it? 
Can't you see I'm soliloquizing? You have interrupted and I've lost you, sir. I have the very other letter from Mr. White to see the Mercado. A letter from Mercado? So the word you have to say to me. Ah, he was at last. Oh, I thought it would come sooner or later. Mercado was struck by the fact that no executions have taken place in Chichibu for a year. And the decrees that unless somebody is beheaded within the next month, the post of law by executioner shall be abolished and the city reduced to the rank of village. But that will involve us all in irretrievable ruin. Yes, there is no help for it. I shall actually execute somebody at once. But the only question is, who should it be? Well, it seems unkind to say so. But as you're already under a sentence of death or bludgeoning, everything seems to point you. To me? What are you talking about? I can't execute myself. Why not? Why not? Because, in the first place, since decapitation is extremely difficult, not to mention dangerous, <laughs> and in the second, it's suicide. And suicide you have no bent. That is so, no doubt. We might reserve that point. True, it could be argued six months hence before the full court. Besides, I, I guess a man can chop his own head off. A man might try. Even if you succeed in cutting it half, oh, that would be something. It would be taken as an earnest of your desire to comply with the imperial will. No, no, but there I am admit, as official headsman, my reputation is at stake, and I can't consent to embark on a professional operation unless I see my way to a successful result. <laughs> this professional conscientiousness is highly beneficial to you, but it places us in a very awkward position. My good sir, awkwardness of your position is great itself compared with that of a man engaged in the act of chopping his own head off. I'm afraid that, unless you can find a substitute, a substitute? <laughs> oh, certainly. <laughs> Nothing easier. Uba, I now pronounce you Lord High Substitute. I should be delighted. Such an appointment has realized my fondest dreams. But no, at any sacrifice, I must set bounds to my insatiable ambition. I am so proud if I allowed my family pride to be my guide. I volunteer to quit this fear instead of you in a minute or two. For family pride must be denied and set aside and mortified and Awaiting the sensation of a short jump song From a chip and chip jumper on a big black cloth 
to me, to do me from to me, up here. Congratulate me, gentlemen, I found a volunteer. The Japanese are with a little bit.
Otherwise, as I'm so much more attractive than anybody else in the world. <laughs> How this be, Vanity? No. Nature is lovely and rejoices in her loveliness. I am a child of nature and take after my mother. <laughs> Don't let's be down-hearted. 
There's a silver lining to every cloud. Certainly, that's been perfectly happy. By all means. Let's. Let's <laughs> go, Enjoy ourselves. <laughs>
like that. Thank you, I'm much obliged. <laughs> now, kiss her. Oh, thank you. It's <laughs> sheer torture. No, there's no use to reading oneself a falsehood. What do you mean? My child, my foolish child. Oh, how shall I break it to her? My little bride that was to have been. What to have been? Yes, you never can be mine. What? Oh, so glad. I've just ascertained that when a married man beheaded his wife is buried alive. Buried alive? Yes, buried alive. It's a most unpleasant death. But whom did you get that from? Oh, from Bouba. He's my solicitor. Ah, oh, but he may be mistaken. <laughs> so I thought. So I consulted the judge ordinary, the master of the road, <laughs> oh, the chartered of the exchequer, first commissioner of police. They're all of the same opinion. Let him use the unanimous, unanimous agreements on the point of law. But stop. This law has never been put into force. Not yet. You see, Flirting is the only crime punishable by death, and married men never flirt. Of course they don't, I quite forgot that. <coughs> well, I suppose I may take it that my dream of happiness is at an end. Darling, I'm not wish to appear selfish, and I love you with all my heart. I don't suppose I should ever love anybody else half as much. But whether I agree to marry you, my own. I have no idea. Yes. That I should have to be buried alive in a month. All right. It's the very first I've heard of it. It, it makes a difference, doesn't it? It does, of course. You see, buried alive is such a stuffy death. I call it a beast of a death. You see my difficulty, don't you? Yes. And I see my own. If I insist on you carrying out your promise, I doom you to a hideous death. And if I release you, you must marry Cobb at once. Very well then. Behave! 
What? Now? Certainly, at once. Chop it off, chop it off. My <laughs> <laughs> good sir, I don't go about you may take a few gentlemen at a moment's notice. Quite. I never even did a film of them. Still, as Lord High Executioner. As Lord High Executioner, I've got to be heading in a month. I'm not ready yet. I, I don't know how it's done. I was going to take lessons. <laughs> I need to begin with uh, a guinea pig and to work my way through the animal kingdom till I come to a second trombone. Why, you don't suppose that, as a humane man, I can accept the post of Lord High Executioner if I happen to the duties of purely nominal. I can't kill you. I can't kill anything. I can't kill any booty. <laughs> oh, come, my poor fellow. We all have unpleasant duties to discard at times. After all, what is it? If I don't mind, why should you? Remember, sometime it must be done. Must it? I'm not so sure about that. What do you mean? Why should I execute you? When making an affidavit to you there, <coughs> would do just as well. There are plenty of witnesses. The judge ordinary, the master throws, the chancellor of the exchequer, first commissioner of police. But where are they? There they are, they all swear to it, won't you? Am I to understand all of us high officers are required to perjure ourselves to ensure your safety? Why not? You'd be grossly insulted as usual. Will the insult be cash down or credit card? <laughs> it would be uh, a ready money transaction. Well, it will be a useful decision. Very good. Choose your fiction and I'll endorse it. Ah, bloody pride of you like that, my boy. But I tell you the price of yum oh, yum 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 bobby yum yum. Here, Commissioner, go and fetch yum yum. Now, take yum yum and marry yum yum. Only please, go away and never come back again. Ah, here she is now. Ah, uh, yum yum. Are you uh, particularly busy? Not particularly. Have you saved five minutes to spare? Yes. Then. Go along with his grace here, the Archbishop of Tattoos. He'll marry you in a minute. But if I have to be married... Uh, uh, don't ask any questions. Thank you, Google, explain all. But wait, one moment! Not for words. The Mercado has gone his way, no doubt, to ascertain whether I have obeyed his decree. And if he finds you still alive, I shall have the greatest difficulty in persuading him I accept you. <laughs> oh, see that. For here he comes! <laughs>
This is in Japanese. <laughs> <laughs> At Titipool, in the presence of the Lord Chancellor, Lord Chief Justice, Attorney General, Secretary of State for the Home Department, Lord Mayor, Chief of Police, Groom of the Second Floor Front. They're all there, Your Majesty. I counted them myself. Very good, House. Oh, I wish I'd been in time for performance. Like a tough fellow he was too, Your Majesty. A man of gigantic strength. His body was terrific. It was really a remarkable scene. Describe it. <laughs> Card. As for my circulation, 
It is the largest in the world. <laughs> and yet he fled. <laughs> much if I ask you to produce him. He goes by the name of... Nanki Poo! Nanki Poo. Um, it's quite easy. Uh, that is, it's rather difficult. In point of fact, he... He's gone abroad. Gone abroad. Uh, yes, his address is Knightsbridge. Ah! What's the matter? See here! I desire to associate myself with that expression of regret. You have any notion? Of course you haven't. How could you? If a fellow of exalted rank chooses to disguise himself as a second trombone, of course he must take the consequences. It really distresses me to see you take on so. I'm sure he thoroughly deserved all he got. We are infinitely obliged to your majesty. Much obliged, your majesty. And very much obliged, your majesty. Obliged? Not a bit. How could you tell? No, of course we couldn't tell who the gentleman really was. It wasn't written on his forehead, you know. <laughs> it, it might have written on his pocket handkerchief, but then Japanese don't use pocket handkerchiefs. <laughs> <laughs> I forget the punishment for compassing the death of the heir apparent. Punishment? Yes. Something lingering with boiling oil in it, I fancy. Something of that sort. I think boiling oil occurs in it somewhere, but I'm not sure. I know it's something humorous, but lingering with either boiling oil or melted lead. But, come, come, don't fret. I'm not a bit angry! If, if your majesty will accept our assurance, we really have the slightest idea. Of course. I wasn't there. I knew nothing about it. That's the pathetic part of it. Unfortunately, the fool of an act says compassing the death of the heir apparent. There's not a word about a mistake. No. no. Or not knowing. No. Or having no notion. No. Or not being there. No. There should be, of course. Yes. yes. But there isn't. No. That's the slovenly way in which these acts are drawn. However, cheer up. It will be all right. I'll have it all to the next session. Now, let's see about your execution. <coughs> well... After lunch suit you, or can you wait till then? Oh yes, we can wait till then. Right then, we'll make it after lunch. I don't want any lunch. <laughs> I'm really very sorry for you all, but it's an unjust world. And virtue is triumphant only in theatrical performances. <laughs> See how the fates their gifts are got. Happy be is not, yet be is worthy, I dare say, of more prosperity than they.
on a tree by a river, a little taunted, saying, reluctant, reluctant, reluctant. And I said to him, Dicky Bird, why do you sit, singing, reluctant, reluctant, reluctant? Is it weakness of intellect, Bertie, I cry, or a rather tough worm in your little inside? With the shake of his poor little head, he replied, Oh, reluctant, reluctant, reluctant. He slapped at his chest as he sat on that bow, singing, reluctant, reluctant, reluctant. And the corporation is staggered in brow. Oh, reluctant, reluctant, reluctant. He sobbed and he sighed, and a gurgle he did. Then he plunged himself into the billowy wave. And an echo arose from the suicide grave. Oh, reluctant, reluctant, reluctant. Now I feel just as sure as I'm sure that my name isn't reluctant, reluctant, reluctant. That was polite in affection that made him explain, oh, reluctant, reluctant, reluctant. <laughs>
Now then, we've all had a capital lunch and we're quite ready. Have all the painful preparations been made? Your Majesty. All is prepared. Then produce the unfortunate gentleman and his two well-meaning but misguided accomplices. <coughs> Particulars. Merely a corroborative detail intended to give artistic verisimilitude to an otherwise more than. May you refrain from putting in your oar? In fact, this, Your Majesty. When Your Majesty says, let the thing be done, I think it's always done. So, when Your Majesty says, kill a gentleman, a gentleman is told off to be killed. Consequently, that gentleman is as good as dead. And if he is dead, then why not say so? I see. Nothing could be more satisfactory. <laughs>
ladies and gentlemen, and I'm very happy to welcome you here to this performance of the Mikado. And I'm very happy to welcome so many of you, and I hope that you were able to put up with the inconvenience that this may have caused you with a very crowded hall. This year we celebrate 50 years of college operas, and also celebrate 25 years of co-productions at the Mercy Convent, a special year for us. And one of the hopes we would have had, I think, is that the show we would have this year would be a fitting celebration of that record. And I think our expectations have been exceeded by the performance we have witnessed this week. I would like to thank and to congratulate everyone involved with the show, the cast, the principals and chorus, for the talent and hard work they have shown, the people who worked at so many different things, backstage, painting scenery, props, and so on. The people who worked in front of the stage on programs and seats, they can all feel very pleased and happy with the job they have done this week. I would like to thank, as always, the orchestra who contributes so much to our enjoyment of these shows. And if I might mention particularly this is Lil Noom, who is playing in her 49th show. I congratulate also the people who, I suppose, have put an awful lot of work into this show, and we have seen the results of it. They are Sister Eileen of the Mercy Convent, Noel Curran, our musical director, and the producer of the show, Joe Donnello. <laughs> there is one group of people still working. They're making tea and putting out biscuits. So we would like you to join us in the college dining room now for a cup of tea. And then may I wish you a safe journey home and a happy Christmas. Thank you very much.